What's up guys, in this video, I wanna do a quick review of adding and subtracting rational expressions, just like I would teach my students the day before a test. So if you're cramming for a test, or you're just looking for a quick review, this video is gonna be perfect for you because I'm gonna highlight the most important things you need to understand, but then also work through a couple of examples so therefore you can see exactly how I approach everything. Now, when we're adding and subtracting rational expressions, the one thing I always try to relate to my students is how do we add simple fractions? Now, this is a question I just love to ask students because even though this is something taught, I don't know, in fourth, fifth, third, Great, I have no idea. But again, even high school students will still struggle with how to do this in their head. But it's really important to just remember the basic understanding of adding and subtracting fractions when you have non-common denominators, right? We have to get the common denominator so we can apply the operation in the numerator. So on a problem like this, you have to understand that the common denominator is going to be six. That's the smallest number that both two and three evenly divide into. And one little tip or trick sometimes we do is just say, well, just multiply the denominators because that's always gonna give you a common denominator. And a lot of times that is going to work. In this example, you can see that is actually exactly what the least common denominator is going to be. So I'm gonna multiply by three on the left-hand side and a two on the right-hand side. Now I can go and rewrite these fractions as a three over six plus a two over six. And now, since my denominators are exactly the same, I can go and add them to be a five over six. Now again, I always like to present that because that's a good, quick little review. However, ladies and gentlemen, what if I had a one half plus a one over six? It's important to understand that whenever we are adding and subtracting fractions that do not have common denominators, don't always just revert to multiplying the denominators to get a common denominator. Because in this case, if we break down six, we can see that's going to be a three times a two. So the common denominator between two and three times two is simply just going to be six. All I simply need to do in this problem to get common denominators is to multiply by three on the left and the right. Right? So what we're doing is we're simplifying this first and we're looking to see, oh, actually, all I need to do to be able to get common denominators is just multiply one of my fractions. Now I have a three over six plus a one over six, and we can see that actually equals a four over six, which we know we can now further simplify right down to a two thirds. So those are some important things to remember about fractions. And now as we get into rational expressions, we just need to understand it's just adding it a little variable to it with the variables, but the same process we're gonna use is going to be exactly the same. So let's just do some quick two examples. What if I add some X's to what I was doing? So I had a one over x plus two times a one over x plus three. Now again, looking to see if they have anything in common in this case, you're like, no, I don't see anything. So guess what? The common denominator is simply going to be their product. So x plus three times an x plus three over here, x plus two times an x plus two. Now you can see they're gonna have common denominators, right? It's just the product of the exact same numbers. So now we just can combine our numerators, which in this case is going to be a two x plus five all over my common denominator of an x plus three times an x plus two. However, don't always just assume, just like we did over here, that all common denominators is just simply the product. What if I had a one over x plus two plus a one over a two x plus four, right? Again, I don't wanna always just multiply what the other denominator is in either. Look to factor. Just like I broke down six into three times two, that's the process of factoring, look to factor. In this case, I can factor out a two, and that's gonna be a two times an x plus two. Now you can see these two denominators already share an x plus two. So to be able to obtain a common denominator, I just need to multiply by a two on the top and the bottom. Now I have the exact same denominators, I can just apply the operation in the numerator. So two plus one is going to be a three, all over a two times an x plus two. And then the last thing that we just need to remember when we're dealing with expressions is we're going to want to include our excluded values. Those are gonna be the values that are gonna make your denominator equal to zero. In this case, you can see negative two makes my denominator equal to zero. So I can say x cannot equal a negative two. Over here, I can see that negative three and negative two make my denominator equal to zero. So x say x cannot equal a negative three as well as a negative two. So that's the basic understanding for adding and subtracting rational expressions. Now let's get into some examples. All right, so first example, we just have a simple adding, right? And again, first thing I always want to do is go ahead and simplify, right? Because we wanna be able to see, is there something, anything that they have already in common between our two denominators? Because obviously they're not the same, so we can't apply the operation until we get the denominators to be the same. In this case, I can factor out a three x, that's gonna leave me with a x plus three. All right, now over here, obviously we see we do not have the expression x plus three, so I need to definitely go ahead and multiply that on my left-hand side. And then over here, you can see I have a nine, but I only have a three. So to get that to be up to a nine, I need to multiply that by three. I have an x, but I need to be able to get an x squared on this left-hand side, or as I have on the x 
left-hand side, so I'm going to multiply up here by a 3x. Whatever I do in the denominator, I have to go and do in the numerator. All right, so now I'm going to apply distributive property here, so that's going to be a 7x plus 21, and then over here, that's going to be a positive 3x squared. All over my common denominator, which is really just written right here, because this simplifies down to a 9x squared, 9x squared times x plus 3. Now I want to see, is there anything else I can really simplify this? No, you can rewrite this in descending order, especially if that's the directions by your teacher. That would be nice and very helpful, but it's not required. And again, it all depends on what are the instructions or how your teacher has taught you. The important thing, though, is we do want to make sure we mention our excluded values. So what are the values that are going to make my denominator equal to 0? In this case, we have a negative 3 as well as a 0. So x cannot equal negative 3 as well as 0. All right, let's stick with addition real quick before we get into subtraction. So in this case, you can see I do not have common denominators, right? And there's really nothing else I can do to simplify them. So the way to find the common denominator is just going to simply multiply these two denominators, right? Always look to simplify first to see if they have anything in common. But when that doesn't happen, you just know that to get the common denominator, I need to multiply by an x minus 1 over here and then a x minus 3 over here. Now, in this case, I do have some distributive property I need to go ahead and apply, right? It doesn't matter if your variable is to the right of the parentheses or to the left, just make sure you go ahead and do that. So by applying distributive property, I'm gonna get a 9x squared minus 9x, and then plus, right, because that's a positive, 2x squared minus a 6x. This is all over my common denominator of x minus one times x minus three. Why am I writing x plus one? That's supposed to be a plus. Mr. McLogan, come on now. So that's a 9x squared, so that's gonna be plus a 9x. Okay. Now let's go and look to see what we can combine up top here. So these two terms both have an x squared, so I can add those together. So that's going to be 11x squared. And 9x minus 6x is going to be a positive 3x all over a x plus 1 times an x minus 3. And now let's go and talk about the values that make my denominator equal to 0. That's going to be x cannot equal a negative 1, and x cannot equal a positive 3. All right, so now let's get into some subtraction. Now, I know you guys see a lot of threes, and you might want to start dividing things out. But again, remember, we can only do that when terms are separated by multiplication and division. And we are subtracting in this case. So the first thing we want to do is simplify all of our numerators and denominators. Up top in this numerator, I can factor out a 3. So that's going to be a 3 times x plus 1. And then over here, I can rewrite this as a x minus 3 times x plus 3. So hopefully we recognize there's really nothing that my two denominators, let me rephrase that, they have an x plus 3 shared, right? But to get common denominators, all I simply need to do is multiply this expression by an x minus 3, okay? So over here, there's really nothing else I can simplify out. That's going to remain the same. And then on the right-hand side, though, we're going to have a little bit of a different story. Because here's the really important thing to remember when you are subtracting rational expressions. That's a positive 3x, but you're minusing a positive 3x. So minusing a positive is the same thing as think of that as a negative 3x. So when I apply my distributive property, we're treating this as a negative 3x, right? And sometimes you can rewrite this as a positive and just re take that as a negative, like plus a negative, right? In my opinion, rewriting a subtraction problem as addition just makes your life a lot easier. I actually I'm actually not going to rewrite that in factored form because I want to simplify that. So I'm going to rewrite that back the way it was. I wanted to see if anything divided out, which they don't. All right, so then over here, I'm going to have a negative 3x squared, and therefore that's going to be a positive 9x. Okay, now again, this is all going to be over my common factor of x minus 3 times x plus 3. So now we can combine these. So that's a negative 3x squared. That's going to be what? Plus a 3x? No, that's not plus 3x. That's plus a 12x plus a 12x, and then, yes, plus 3. Okay, now I can factor out a 3 in that case. Let's see if that's going to simplify to anything. So if I factor out a negative 3x, that's going to be an x squared minus a 12x minus 3. That's not going to be factorable, so I don't need to worry about um, refactoring anything else down. So, but this will be times an x minus 3 times an x plus 3. But again, we need to make sure we include our excluded values. So we know x cannot equal here a positive 3 and a negative 3. All right, so let's get into this example. So again, first thing I always want to do is factor, factor, factor. So the only thing I can really factor is over here. What two numbers multiplied to give me a 3, but add to give me a negative 4. So that's going to be an x minus 3 times an x minus 1, right? Now again, we see that the x minus 1 is shared. The only thing I need to do is multiply by a x minus 3 on this left-hand side. All right, now I do have a binomial times a binomial. So I'll go ahead and apply FOIL or distributive property whatever kind of works for you to understand that. So on this left-hand side, I'm going to have a x squared. Let's see, that's going to be a negative 3x plus 2x. So that's going to be a negative x and minus 6 
all over a x minus three times an x minus one. And then over here, again, what I always like to do, ladies and gentlemen, since we didn't need to multiply or get common denominators, I always like to rewrite this as adding a negative, okay? So I change the subtraction to addition, and then I make it multiplying by a negative one. So that's what I'm gonna apply with my distributor property. So that's going to be a minus a two x plus one. Now you can just rewrite this over the same denominator because again, they have common denominators, right? So you're just applying the operation that you have with your two numerators. Now the only two things I can go ahead and combine are my middle terms and going to be my constant. So my final answer is going to be an x squared minus a three x minus a five. That cannot be further factored down times an x minus three times x minus one. And then again, let's go ahead and talk about our excluded values. X cannot equal three and a x cannot equal a positive one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing are so important for the next lesson that we're going to cover, which is going to be simplifying complex fractions. We're gonna take everything that we learned and go ahead and apply them. That video is coming up next.